This is geometry, unit 10. We're going to talk about the volume of pyramids and cones. We watched a video that showed that we took three pyramids to fill the same size of the rectangular prism that ha had the same base and the same height. So here, if we need to extend our picture a little bit, it seemed to have gotten cut off. So there we have a pyramid inside of a rectangular prism. If the base is a square, we would call that a square pyramid. The square pyramid has the same height as the prism. Our video that we just watched showed that it took three of the prisms to fill up I'm sorry, three of the pyramids to fill up the prism. The volume of a pyramid is one third. Because it took three pyramids to fill up one prism, the pyramid is one third of the volume of the prism. So the volume V of a pyramid is one-third the base times the height. Where B is the area of the base. Now let's not make the mistake where B is just one dimension. B is the actual full area. That's why it's a capital B. H is the perpendicular height. It has to be perpendicular. It cannot be a slant height. This picture down here shows us a slant height. That's not the 13 we want. We need to know what the perpendicular height is. So there might be some more calculations to be done. Our first example will be over here where they give us the actual height. The perpendicular. See the box? They have a little square in the back corner telling us that the base is a square. All the sides are the same. So that means this dimension is 14 also. So if this is a pyramid, we know that the volume is one third the base times the height. One third. Our base in this case happens to be 14 times 14 times a height, which is 10. So that's going to be one third, 196 times 10. Well, three doesn't go into 196, three doesn't divide into 10. So we'll just kind of keep going here. One third of 10 times 196 puts a zero on the end of that. So now we're at 1,960 and we'll divide that number by three. So you can either take 1,960 and divide it by three or you could say one third, I like to use parentheses with that, times 1,960 and you'll get the same answer either way you do it. So that's approximately 653.33, these are meters, so they're meter cubed, cubic meters. The second example is a little bit different. Notice the dimension they give us is a slant height. It's not the actual height. The actual height would come straight down, right to the middle, and then we'd need to measure across. So we need to have this triangle image where 
13 is the hypotenuse. And if the triangle is coming from the middle to the edge, that's going to be half, so that'll be 5. Now we have to calculate what this height is going to be. Now, one dimension is 5, and the hypotenuse is 13. You may notice that this could be a Pythagorean triple. You might be familiar with the numbers that it takes. If you're not, you can just say hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. The hypotenuse is the 13. One of the legs we know is 5. The other one we know is H. So 5 squared and H squared. We square the values and we subtract. We get 144 equals H squared. So H is going to be the square root of 144, which is 12. That's not our answer. That's the height. The volume is going to be one-third the base times the height. Now we're ready to plug this all in. We have 10 times 10 because we have a square base. And the height we determined was 12. Now, we can't take one-third of 100, but you can take one-third of 12. So if you like to do your fraction ahead of time, 10 times 10 is 100. One-third of 12 is 4, so the volume is going to be 400 centimeters cubed, or cubic centimeters. Okay, next we have a pyramid that's in Mexico. It has a square base. So there will be our pyramid. It has a square base, the height down to the center is going to be 63, 63 meters. The total volume is 970,725. What we want to figure out is what is the length of this square base. Well, we know that volume equals one-third base times height. We know that the volume is going to be 970,725 times one-third times the base, which is x squared, times the height, which is 63. There's a couple different ways I could handle this. I could multiply by 3 to the other side. Or I could just divide the 63 by 3. So let's do that. So we have x squared times 21. Because 63 divided by 3 or 1 third of 63 is 21. So now we'll divide by 21. Nine seven zero seven two five divided by 21 gives us 46,225. And that's the dimension squared. So we need to take the square root of that amount. 
And when we take the square root of that, we get 215. And these are meters. Notice I showed my steps. I don't just have an answer sitting there. Expecting you to start out with your formula, plug your numbers in, start to break it apart, take the square root. You're allowed to use a calculator, but you're showing your steps along the way. Next, we have a cone. In the video, we also saw that a cone, it took three cones to fill up one cylinder that would have the same base and the same height. So volume is still one-third, the capital B times the H, but the B is always a circle, so we can call it one-third pi r squared times the height, where B is the area of a circle, and H is your height, and R is the radius. So here we have our cone. We know that the radius is 10. We know that the height is 16. One third base times height, our base is a circle, so it's pi r squared times the height. We're looking for the volume. The radius is 10 and the height is 16. One third times pi times 100 times 16. Now, if you want to type that whole thing into your calculator, you could do that. One divided by three times pi times 10 squared or 100 times 16. You get 1,675. Point 0.52 cubic meters. Now notice that I wrote down my formula, I wrote down my numbers, and then I use my calculator. I didn't use the calculator right off the top. If three would have gone into one of those numbers and didn't have the fraction sitting around, I would have been very interested in trying to get an exact answer using pi, but I was gonna have 1600 divided by three times pi. Kind of messy, so I used my calculator. Look at letter B. Letter B gives us 9, which is the slant height. We don't want the slant height. We want the actual height. So again, we're going to have to take the hypotenuse squared not the h squared, but the hypotenuse squared and the leg squared plus leg squared. The hypotenuse is across from the 90, so that's 9 squared, 4 squared, and h squared. So we get 81. 9 times 9 is 81. 4 times 4 is 16. We'll subtract our 16 across. And we get 65. So H times H is 65. So we're really looking for the square root of 65. That is our actual height. 
So let's use, let's not do a decimal with that. Let's use the square root of 65. So the volume is going to be one-third pi r squared times the height. Uh, one-third, sorry, I have one-half written there, one-third. So one-third, we know that the radius is four, and we're going to square that, and now we know the height is the square root of 65, which is a little bit bigger than eight. Three doesn't go into 16. Three doesn't go into the square root number. So we're going to use our calculator. I like to use parentheses around my fraction. Four squared or 16. And you can say the square root of 65. 135.08 and that is cubic feet what do you see different about number three You have an angle, you have the actual height this time, but you do not have the radius. So we're going to need to take the 70. What method are we going to use to help us calculate for the radius? Does Pythagorean theorem work here? We only have one side. Pythagorean theorem requires two sides. So that's out. Special right triangles? Ah, uh, this is a 70, not a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. So no, we can't do that. We'll have to use trigonometry, Sokotoa. Sokotoa tells us that we're going to use tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of 70 equals opposite, which is the opposite side, over the side next to it, adjacent. Put it over 1 and cross multiply, so we get r times the tangent of 70, that equals 25. Divide by the tangent of 70, So you need to be sure you're in degree mode whenever you're doing trigonometry. So 25 divided by the tangent of 70 degrees. That gives us 9.1. That nine rounds this nine up to a 10, which rounds this up to a one. Now we know what the radius is. So the volume is going to be one-third pi r squared times the height, which is 25. So we can go to our calculator since we've written this on our paper. Don't just want answers written on your homework sheet. Need to see the steps. We get 2,167. Point 96. These are centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters.
the volume of a right cone. A right cone just tells you that it's standing up straight. You know what the volume is. The volume is 1350 and notice it has the pi symbol in it. We're trying to find the height if the radius is 18. Trying to solve for H. So we can take our 1350 pi. 18 times 18 is 324. We can take one third of 324. And that gives us 108. So we have 108 pi times h. And we'll divide by the 108. And when we get our 1350, notice that the pi's cross out. So actually, we're only dividing by 108. So h is going to be 12.5. And these are meters. Here, using Cavalieri's principle, all we need to know is the height if your shape is slanted. The volume is one third pi r squared times h. We know that we're 1.1 squared times our height of 2.7. And we can type that into our calculator. 1 divided by 3 times pi times 1.1 squared times 2.7, 3.42. These are centimeters cubed, cubic centimeters. Right, for our next question, we have a triangle as a base. So our one third, the base times the height. We know that the base is going to be half of 6 times 8 times 3. We can take 1 third of 3 and that would cross them out. We can take half of the 8 and that would make a 4. So the volume would become 6 times 4 which is 24 cubic feet. Our last question, we are having a coffee maker. It takes 14 minutes to brew the coffee the size of the filter. We're trying to find the flow rate of cubic inches per minute. It takes 14 minutes. So how much is disappearing every minute? So our volume is one third pi r squared times the height. We need to figure out the volume where the radius is 3 and the height is 3.5. We type that into our calculator. 1 divided by 3 times pi times 9 times 3.5. And we get a volume of 32.99. Those are inches cubed. Now, if that's what the volume of the cone is, find the flow rate of the coffee in cubic inches per minute. Well, it takes 14 minutes for this to drain out. So if we divide this by 14, we figure how much is coming out per minute. And we get 2.36. 2.36 Uh, cubic inches per minute. That's the flow rate. 